This is the story, the fantastically true story, of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. The subversive operations of enemy agents require large sums of money. In a moment, you'll see a communist campaign to infiltrate an organization and its bank account. Mr. Vance, over $10,000. I'd say your campaign was off to a fine start. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. And I ought to thank Herb Philbrick, whose idea it was to stage this charity fight for the center fund. Well, I'm afraid I can't take any credit. This isn't the first time the boxing profession has come through for a worthy cause. True, but you did an excellent job of selling it. You know, judging from tonight's receipts, the town's behind your youth center a thousand percent. Well, that's good to hear. Well, I must get along. Aren't you going to stay for the main event? No, I have an appointment. Well, good luck, Mr. Vance, and let us know if there's anything further we can do to help out. Thank you. Okay. So long. Nice to see you, and thanks. I'll see you at my house tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Fine, Mr. Vance. I'll be there. Good night. Good night. Hello, comrade. I see your boxing show went over big. Yeah, big. Where'd you come from? I've been waiting for you. Oh, you, you surprised me. Well, I'm surprised that you're surprised, Herd. Didn't you think the Communist Party would be interested in your little project? Well, this isn't my project, precisely. I know, Mr. Vance is fronting for it. However, all this is beside me. The fact is, you are trying to raise money to build a youth center. A boon to the underprivileged kid. Solid goal, Herb. Just like Mr. Vance and the other do-gooders you put on your team. I want you to know that the Communist Party is not only for you in this enterprise, they're with you. You... You mean the Communist Party is going to make a contribution? In a sense, yes. We're going to be in this money-raising campaign with you. And when the center is built, we want to place key members on its staff. Let me put it this way, Herbert. The party can win every other battle and yet lose a victory. Able to capture the, the minds, the imaginations, and loyalty of the youth. There must be young communists coming up all the time. Yeah. I'll keep in touch with you. There's no time to waste this morning, Rick. You've got a 10 o'clock meeting with Mr. Vance, and this is one you don't want to be late for. They're so fascinated with the way you drive that he can't let you out of his sight. Well, whoever he is, friend or comrade, he's in for a very disappointing time. This is no secret mission. Maybe if I slowed down, we could talk it over, save him the trouble. Well, okay, if he wants to stay behind you, Phil Brick, he can. You don't have to hide the fact that you're going to visit the respectable Mr. Vance. our little sightseeing tour. Mr. Vance. Come in, Felbert. Good morning, sir. You're very punctual. It's good to see you again. Well, I have to be punctual if I'm going to get to my office before noon. Well, this shouldn't take long. There are a few details we should discuss. I'm entirely at your service, sir. Now that we have a war chest of over $10,000, I think we can make some fairly definite plans for the future. Gosh, I, I hate to be a wet blanket, Mr. Vance, but I think right at this point, 
We'd be wise to concentrate just on the plans we have for raising the rest of the money that we need to build this center. Well spoken. Herb, I want you to meet William Hudson. Bill, this is Herb Philbrick. Nice to meet you, Herb. How do you do? Bill was designated treasurer at the last board meeting, the one you couldn't attend. Oh? I, I have some figures here I'd like to discuss with you. Sit down, gentlemen. Yes, of course. Since both of you have quite a considerable background in youth work, I'm sure you'll find you have a great deal in common. Now, these Mr. Vance, you'd be surprised how much Comrade Bill and I have in common. And that'd make two of us surprised. How do they do it, the comrades? Plant a couple of secret members on an executive board. Next, see that the party controls all key positions in the organization. Finally, freeze out the opposition. I'd forgotten about you, but I see you haven't forgotten about me. Something suspicious about where I'm going, friend? A man can be perfectly healthy looking and still need a doctor. Especially when he's leading a triple life. <laughs> Trying to appear average on the outside, but torn by doubt and worry on the inside. Yes, at a time like this, you really need a doctor, or a psychiatrist, or better yet, under the circumstances, a contact like Special Agent Jerry Dressler of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Your pulse is fast, Herb. Look, Jerry, the door's closed. There's no need to put on an act. This isn't an act, Herb. You look like the walking dead and your pulse is fast. Comrade stepping on your heels? I don't know. Somebody is. I've been tailed for two days, but that's the least of my worries. So I gathered from your report. The situation as you described it is bad, but I don't think it's especially critical. At least not yet. That's what you think. You only know the half of it. The half I knew when I wrote that report. There's more? Much more. This morning, I met the treasurer of the Youth Center Fund. Guess who? Who? A gentleman named Mr. William Hudson. Comrade Bill. Seems he was designated at the last meeting. That puts it in the critical category, Herb. Yeah. I'll get word to the Bureau. Meanwhile, you keep me posted on uh, what happens on your end. Yeah, you bet I will. Coincidentally, Herb, before you leave, I have something that may bear on what you said about being tailed. The local police bureau, subversive detail, checked with the FBI yesterday. Yeah. It seems they received an anonymous tip on one Herbert A. Philbrick, private citizen, heavily committed to youth activity. The anonymous party told the police that Philbrick was a communist. Well, I'll be... That means my attentive friend who's been following me for the last couple of days could be a policeman. Could be suggests several interesting possibilities. None of them very good for Mr. Philbrick. Okay, thanks for the information. So long, Herb. I'll be in touch with you. Back to the office now. You've got a few clients to worry about, too. And you seem to have lost your policeman at last. Maybe you can get a little work done before he catches up with you again. Mr. Philbrick? I wonder if I might have a few words with you. Oh, sure. Sure, come up to my office. Well oh, then, officer, what can I do for you? I'm sure you're not here to sell me tickets to the policeman's ball. I'd like to tell you you're wrong, Mr. Philbrick, and sell you a couple of tickets. Maybe I will before I leave. By way of introduction, I'm on the subversive detail. We've been informed that you are a communist. It's a very serious charge, officer. Do you mind telling me who gave you this information? I can't tell you that, sir. I see. Well, 
Before we decide on what I'm not, suppose we examine what I am. I'm a member of the Union Club, the Advertising Club, Woodlawn Country Club. There's a certificate of merit for my church where I happen to teach a Sunday school class. Those are my bank references. I'm an intense anti-communist officer. I detest everything that communism stands for. I invite you to examine my record. Talk to my friends, my business associates, my relatives. I'll, I'll give you a list of them. I wish you'd check every one of them. I want to be clear to this charge. I'd like that list, Mr. Philbrick. I want to cooperate, officer. Anything else I can do, anything at all, I want to do. If there is anything at all, I'll let you know. How soon could you prepare this list? Well, let's say uh, tomorrow morning. I want to make it complete. In the meantime, I'll be available. Fine. Say, uh, by the way, Mr. Philbrick, about those tickets to the policeman's ball. Yes. I just happen to have a couple in my office. I'll bring them over when I come for the list. I'll be waiting. Fine. to see you right away. No, 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 as soon as possible. Right. I'll be there. Comrade Bill chose this as a rendezvous. Not a very private one to tell him what I have to tell him, but of course he hasn't any idea what he's going to hear. Not like Comrade Bill to be late either. I wonder what happened to him. Hey, not bad. Look at that score. Yeah, not bad for an amateur. Say, have you got a couple of nickels? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I may have. I want to see if I can do that again. What's your problem, Herb? Big one. I'm in trouble. Yeah, what kind of trouble? Police anti-red squad. They're investigating me. Hmm? Hey, look at that, eh? Maybe you didn't hear what I said. The police anti-red... I heard what you said. Tell me more. They've been tailing me for a couple of days. Today a cop came to my office, laid it on the line. Someone tipped them off. I'm a communist. How'd you handle it? How would I handle it? I denied everything, offered to cooperate. I told them that... I think you'd do better with a little more body English. Well, you might be right. You think you convinced them? I think so, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm scared stiff. I've got to become inconspicuous. I've got to drop out of all activities, party and non-party. The first thing I've got to do is drop out of this youth center campaign. That would be very unwise, Herb. The last thing the party would want you to do. What are you talking about? I could get the party in an awful spot, to say nothing of myself. The party will make such decisions for you, Herb. In fact, they've already made this one. What? You mean the party knows about this? The party knows all about it. In fact, they even know who tipped off the police. Who was it? Who was it? It was me. You? Are you out of your mind? Not at all. See, the party wanted the police to investigate you. The party is very anxious that this youth center campaign be a big success. That the project itself be a fertile ground for young recruits. However, the party is realistic, realizes that if the Communist was exposed as one of the leaders, and his whole venture would die of warning. Though uh, your membership is secret, Herb, it's always conceivable that someone might denounce you. But what would happen then? Well, the police would have to say that they've already investigated you and, and certified you clean. You see, the party is trying to protect you for the future by having you investigated now. You might at least have given me a clue so I wouldn't have worried myself to death. Jackpot. You've got everything you wanted, haven't you, comrade? All the questions answered before they're asked. All the loopholes plugged before they're discovered. OK, 
Okay, Phil, Rick, figure it out. What's the prescription for exposing this whole deal? There's one place you can get the answer to that, the right answer, and you know where that is. It'll be tough at this point trying to expose Comrade Bill without implicating you, won't it, Herb? Of course it will. I'll be the first one they suspect. That's what burns me up. I have to just sit by, watching, doing nothing while they take over a decent, worthwhile organization. And it's funds. This guy will steal them blind for the benefit of the party. If there were a doctor in the house, he'd probably warn you about your blood pressure. I'm sorry, Jerry. I've been burned up ever since I first learned I was turned into the police. By whom and why? Police. You know, if you're right about Comrade Bill dipping into these funds, this would come under police jurisdiction. If we can prove it. And I'm sure we can sooner or later. Might help the Bureau protect the security of its sources, too, if the police can act. Keep your eyes peeled in this direction, Herb. Meanwhile, I'll find out what they think of this angle downtown. Okay, I will. I'll be seeing you, Doc. Goodbye, Herb. isn't it, Philbrick? Or is it? Comrade Bill's not on this corner by pure luck. You can bet your bottom dollar. I'd like to find you. Come with me. What's that? We've got to get out of mailing right away. Oh, something new? The campaign plan doesn't call for a mailing. The plan's been changed. The letter is needed immediately to bring you some money. You were to write it, Comrade. Okay, I'll be glad to, but... Well, does Vance know about this? Is his board approved? Vance doesn't know about it. He's not going to. As a matter of fact, this whole thing's a result of Vance's nosiness. The party doesn't want any more of it. I don't understand this. This is no place to talk about it. Come on, I'll buy you a sandwich, and you can eat it while you write the letter. Come on. Comrade Bill doesn't mind telling you why all the urgency. As if you weren't sure already. Mr. Vance didn't become a millionaire without learning to count. He knows how much money ought to be in the Youth Center Fund. He's told Comrade Bill he wants to go over the books with him in a few more days. The checks which we've been drawn all sound legitimate, of course. But it may be difficult to explain why the balance is so low this early in the game. Now it has been decided that we've got to put enough money back in the fund at once to keep him from asking any questions. He asked me to send out a lot of letters to a big mailing list now, Comrade. That, that just calls attention to it. Naturally. But if the people who get them think they're being asked individually, not as part of the campaign, the whole thing can be handled quietly. Uh-huh. In other words, everybody that gets one of these letters is supposed to think that he's the only one that's being asked for money at this particular time. Well, at least one of a very select handful. Uh. Takes just a little time and one undigested meal to give them the kind of letter they want. That's it, Herb. A nice, tidy appeal. Nice and personal. I'll take this over to the mail service and have them get it out right away. Well, why don't I go along with you? You know, that's my specialty, following through on these things. Glad to have you. Oh, I've got to make a phone call. A phone call? Yeah, to my doctor. He's been running some tests on me. I want to know what the lab said. Turn envelopes now. Huh? I'm having your money sent direct to our account at Mid-State Savings. The letters are on the automatic uh, typewriter now. Would you like to see them? Yeah. 
Thank you. set pretty wide. It's going to crowd this left-hand margin where our sponsors' names are. We want to be able to read those names. Yeah. Oh, Miss. Uh, I wonder if you'd run off one more roll. Make the length of these lines about a, oh, about a half an inch less, would you? Surely. That'll be easy. Thank you. Hope I'm not being too fussy. We wanted to be right. Comrade Bill is so wrong. We don't want it to be right. But how do we gum it up? Think of something, Philbrick. chance, but it's about the only one you'll get. This has got to be fast. It's got to be right. Just take two letters out of savings and slip one new letter in. If they run these without noticing, Comrade Bill is going to be in for a nice surprise. Mid-State Sanding Company. Detail, May speaking. I think you'd be interested in checking the mail tomorrow at the Mid-State Sanding Company. Why? Who is this speaking? Well, I can't tell you that, officer, but I'd suggest you check their mail. The Mid-State Sanding Company. Hello? Nobody likes anonymous phone calls, even though turnabout is considered fair play. But this time, the police should find a very interesting collection of letters when they call on the puzzled manager of the Mid-State Sanding Company. Oh, hi. I'm, uh, I'm beating your time. Go right ahead. I heard what's happened, of course. Oh, I saw the newspapers. I got a call from Vance. He's talking about reorganization, but no details. What did happen? The return envelopes. The mail service somehow misaddressed them. I checked them. I, I was sure they were promptly addressed. Oh, well, the best of proofreaders can make a mistake. The Communist Party doesn't tolerate mistakes, Herb. You know that. And on top of this, the Andy Red Squad showed up when the checks started arriving at the wrong address. That's bad. That's very bad. Yes, and Vance called me in to explain the contributions and then demanded the books immediately. And what makes it even more dangerous is that the police are tracing some of the checks I issued, and they may lead directly to the party. So that's what the newspapers are hinting about. What about Vance? Is he going to bring action against you? Probably. But my personal fate isn't important. The party welfare comes above this. They sent me to tell you that they're withdrawing from the youth center. They're not to make any party contacts until further notice. Very well. I'm sorry about this. I tried my best. Trying isn't good enough for a communist. That's right. time for the youth center, Philbrick, and for all the decent, hopeful people who'll be glad to see it grow and flourish without benefit of the Communist Party of the USA. 
because the contributions were misdirected, the communist plot was exposed to the public. The party's effort to dominate the youth center and control its finances was brought to an end. Next week, we'll bring you another story from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick. The kind of story that could only be told by a man who for nine fantastic years served as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. true story of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. FBI agents have been successful in secretly infiltrating communist cells. In this week's story, 